Diego Jimenez Judy just finished his fourth year and final year of political science at McMaster University. He's really excited to be starting his first year at U of T Law School in the fall. Today, I'm going to be chatting with Diego about his experience with the law school application process in Canada and the tips that he has for future applicants and people that are interested in applying to U of T and law school more broadly. So my first question for Diego is which law schools were you accepted to and, and which ones did you apply to as well? Thank you for having me, Cassidy. Um, so I only applied in Ontario. Uh, I applied to U of T, obviously. Uh, I applied to Osgoode Hall at York. Uh, I applied to Western, uh, Queens, and, and um, the University of Ottawa. Yeah, so I applied to five schools. Um, I was accept, uh, admitted at U of T in January. Uh, it was actually the first school that I was admitted to, and it was the, um, the it was my my top choice at the time. So uh, I actually didn't wait to find out if I would have gotten accepted at any other schools. Um, as soon as I kind of heard the news from U of T, I knew I wanted to go there, uh, and so I never actually ended up finding out if I was admitted to any of the other ones. Um, but those were the five that I that I applied to. And what sparked your interest in law school? Um, I'd say my interest in law school began around high school, I would say grade nine and 10. Um, I have a family, very close family friend who's a lawyer, uh, and I kind of uh, started talking to him about the kind of work that he does. Um, and, and I very much enjoyed the, um, I guess, the logical reasoning uh, part of the law. I'm not really uh, a numbers oriented person. Um, but I always liked kind of figuring out like little word puzzles, uh, that kind of thing. So I found that, you know, the law was kind of, uh, almost like a logical game with words per se, I guess that was kind of where I started. Uh, and then as I got a little bit older, uh, especially going into my first year of university, um, I started kind of learning a little bit more about, you know, different sectors of the law. Um, and then, uh, in my second and third years, I took some of the uh, courses at McMaster that had like a legal basis to them. Um, so I know that the, you know, the Department of Political Science at Mac, um, they has a couple of courses um, that sort of have like a legal emphasis to them, if you will. And I really, really enjoyed those courses. And at that point, I, I was kind of pretty sure that um, law school was something that I really wanted to do. That's awesome. What was your application process like? Um, I guess for me, the application process, probably I would say if the way I kind of look at it was started with when I started studying for the LSAT. Um, so I started studying for the LSAT just a week after the exams of my third year. Uh, and I did, uh, so I started studying in May, wrote the test at the end of August. And then um, once I had my score, um, I kind of began working on my personal statements. Um, the way the application process works in Ontario is that um, each university that you apply to has a different personal statement where they ask a different question or set of questions. Um, so a lot of it was, um, you know, a lot of it, I, I guess the way I maybe got started was um, there's a lot of thinking about, you know, what I kind of wanted law schools, the law schools that I was applying to to know about me. Uh, and then once I figured that out, a lot of the other things kind of started to fall into place. Um, I guess my goal with my personal statements was to kind of connect my experiences, uh, the things I've done, and how they uh, explain the way I see the world and the way, you know, those experiences have kind of shaped the person that I am today. Um, and so once I kind of, you know, spent a week or two, maybe three Reflecting on that, uh, the application process kind of went a little easier. Uh, and then I, other than that, it was just, it's really just um, administrative stuff. They ask your name, uh, where you live, that kind of thing. Uh, but I'd say the main focus was definitely on the uh, personal statement. And, you know, I would say about three weeks of really reflection on what I kind of wanted, how I wanted to, you know, um, demonstrate myself. And then, 
once that kind of clicked into place, writing it wasn't too difficult. If you had to speculate, and I know it's like, it's pretty difficult to speculate, but what do you think might have made you stand out in your application to U of T? Yeah, um, I think that, I think that, I, 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 I think that your personal statement is actually a very key and important part of your application. I think that, you know, of the thousands of people that apply to not just U of T, but you know, all of the law schools and for the 200 spots or 250 spots that they have available, I think that you'll find a lot of people with very similar or grades and LSAT scores in the same range. And I think that uh, at that point, your, what you bring as a person and your, your, you know, how, I guess, how much, how holistic you are, so to speak, really becomes really important. So I think with me, it's, I think what made, made me stand out was in addition to having, you know, uh, grades and an LSAT score that was at, you know, the level that they're kind of looking into, um, I had three key sort of distinct experiences uh, in three different areas that were very much connected to why I want to be a lawyer and what I want to what I want to do with my law degree. Um, so I think that if you're able to connect sort of what you've done up until you have applied to law school with why you want to be a lawyer or why you want to have a law degree, um, and, and you're able to make that sort of connection and, and show the law schools, you know, this is the person I am, this is what I can bring to the table, um, then I think that that kind of will increase your chances of being admitted. And I think that I was able to successfully show um, U of T, these are my experiences, this is what I've done, um, and this is why I wanna be a lawyer, and this is what I wanna use my law degree for. That's awesome. Um, and what were those, those experiences that, that you highlighted? Hmm. Yeah, so my U of T personal statement, and I, I highlighted this in all of my personal statements, but. Uh, if we're specifically talking about my U of T personal statement, uh, it was kind of three um, different experiences. So the first one uh, that I emphasize, uh, emphasize on my, um, my personal statement uh, was the role that I played uh, with the McMaster Mock Trial Club at, well, at Mac. Um, so I participated doing you know, their mock trials um, in first and second year, third year as well. Uh, and then Prior to my fourth year, I actually became an, uh, an executive with the club. I was the VP of communications. Uh, and I kind of talked about how, you know, um, that kind of experience opened my eyes to sort of the different areas of the law and how, you know, the way that, you know, judges interpret cases sets, you know, a legal precedent that is then followed generations later in the, in, in the, the kind of the ways that you know, how cases are decided um, informs the way the law is interpreted down the line. So that was kind of the first area that I focused. The second area that I focused on um, was that I um, participated on a political campaign. Um, so I did a lot of canvassing, uh, a lot of the sort of grassroots campaigning stuff. Um, and I did that through McMaster as well. Uh, there's a placement class called the Practice of Politics. And you're, you know, you're assigned to a political campaign. And for this one, it was the 2019 federal election. And, you know, you kind of get to um, kind of get to see, you know, by canvassing and, and, and speaking to voters and, and getting out and, you know, working for your candidate, you kind of, I kind of got to see the actual political process. And, and it was kind of my first experience with actually talking to voters about how they understand the, um, the political process in Canada, if you will. And, and it's interesting because, and, and again, this is a very limited, I guess, geographical area, but I kind of found that a lot of people are very, I guess, apathetic with the way in which we, we participate politically. Many people are like, well, my vote every four years in the grand scheme of things really doesn't affect the way that our society is organized. And that kind of realization that maybe, you know, a vote every four years doesn't really change the world and, and kind of made me realize, okay, how can I 
you know, make the world a better place, change the world, if you will, uh, if voting isn't really the answer. And I think that a law degree allows you to kind of, you know, push things in a better direction, if you will, in, in your own way, in whichever way you choose. And, you know, um, I think human rights law is something that at the moment, at least, interests me greatly. Uh, and if I can kind of, you know, use my law degree to work towards um, a betterment of human rights in whatever capacity that may be, um, that's something that I really, really want to do. And I emphasize that in my personal statement. And then the last um, experience that I highlighted was um, that uh, for a semester or two, I volunteered with the Wesley Urban Ministries. Um, they're a soup kitchen in the north end of Hamilton. And um, when I was there, I, I, my eyes were very opened to the experiences of a lot of people who, which I think, you know, at, McMaster and you know living in the community that I lived I was never really exposed to um, and I found that just on simple one two minute conversations with a lot of the patrons who used to come to our soup kitchen um, I found that their experiences and the way that they were brought into the world confined them to a place of social injustice that in which they had little control over which to improve their own human condition and and that kind of realization that you know there are people who can really can't do much to improve their own reality uh i guess also you could say inspired me um to want to find a way to improve the reality of at least some people and again i think that a law degree gives you the power or the opportunity at least to try and make the world a better place, if you will. And I think that all those three experiences in a different capacity um, informed my desire to go to law school. And I highlighted that through my personal statement and kind of told a story using those three experiences. Um, and I, I think that, that that did help me stand out a little bit as a candidate. Yeah, thank, thanks for, for sharing. I think that your um, approach to your personal statement and the experiences that you highlight perhaps will also inspire some of the viewers who um, might might not have considered law to now think about it, given like all of the exciting um, possibilities that a law degree can unlock when it comes to human rights and um, other things that, that you've highlighted. Um, so I guess my, my next question is, is there anything that you wished you knew when you were navigating the law school application process? Um, I think, um, I wish I'd know. Hmm. Give me a minute. I thought about this one. Okay, yeah, not going. Um, okay, so I think one thing that I wish I'd known um, sooner um, was sort of the, the abundance of people who are willing to help you out if you simply ask. Um, there are so many resources available that you can take advantage of um, if you start asking. And, and, and students who are already in law school uh, are very easy to find sort of on LinkedIn. Um, there's a website, which unfortunately is shutting down this week uh, that I used a lot. It's called lawstudents.ca. And, and there's a lot of um, one else, two else, three else, even lawyers who contribute regularly on the website. And if you private message them, they're more than willing to give you a plethora of advice uh, and they answer your questions, direct you in the place that you need to go. Um, and, and are extremely helpful. And I wish I kind of knew, I think the 
from my experience so far, I think the legal community, if you will, that, that being those in law school as well as lawyers and, we, and law professors as well, are very willing and eager to help you navigate the application process. I think at the beginning, I was very kind of on my own. Um, I, you know, my parents didn't grow up here. I didn't really either until I was a little bit older. Um, I didn't personally know anyone who had applied to law school in the last, you know, I mean, other than my family friend, but again, he went through that um, 20 years ago. So I didn't, I, I didn't really know anyone who had actually gone through that. And I, I was a little bit in the dark, I guess, at first, but I didn't know that. And, I, and, and I'm happy that I eventually found out that many people in the legal community are so open and willing to help prospective law students uh, when they're applying and kind of guide them in the right direction. Um, so I definitely think that's something I wish I'd known sooner. I'm happy I did find out when I did, but I guess if there's a message that I would give to anyone thinking of applying to, you know, U of T or any other law school is, you know, look around and ask around. So many people are more than willing to help and you'll actually find that they'll give you much more information than you might've initially asked for and open your eyes to so many more opportunities um, that you would probably would have never even considered. That, that's a really, really insightful and helpful piece of advice. Um, so now for to get to some questions about your stats that some students might be interested in, um, if you're comfortable sharing, what was your GPA upon applying to, to U of T and other law schools? Yeah, so when I applied, um, I, I was kind of under the impression that to go to U of T, you needed to have that 3.9 to 4.0 GPA. And I didn't have that. Um, I ended up, I think, with a 3.70 right on the dot. I know that when you do convert your GPA from like your own university GPA to the uh, OLSAS, the conversion, um, your GPA tends to go down a little bit. That's what happened to me. So I did have a little moment when you know you kind of log on, you see your GPA, and you're you're shocked. You're like, oh no, I, th I thought I had way higher. Um, so I had a 3.70, I think, by the time I applied. So your first GPA is the one that doesn't count your fourth year. If you're applying during your fourth year, uh, the first calculation you have will be up to your third year. And the second calculation that you have will be including your first semester. And then if you still haven't gotten admitted yet, that third calculation will include um, your fourth year completed, I think. Uh, so I had a 3.63, and then including my the first semester of my fourth year, uh, that went up to a 3.70. I think it'll be useful for the viewers to know that you don't necessarily need to have like a 4.0 to get into to these top programs. And it's yeah, it's interesting that you bring that up because when so on the law students.ca website that I was referring to, and hopefully somebody kind of comes up with a different um, platform because again the website is closing, but. Uh, there's been some discussion of moving that discussion or what happened, the discussion that took place on that forum elsewhere. Um, a lot of, anonymously, of course, a lot of people would post their stats on the website uh, and you kind of get to read through them and you kind of get to, you kind of get an idea, you know, based off of, you know, what everyone posts. Um, and you start to see that, again, again, I think that there's this impression that to get into U of T, uh, you need to have that 3.9, 4.0, but but there's a lot of people with, again, very competitive um, statistics that might not be exactly uh, at the 3.9 or 4.0 level. And then I guess that really emphasizes the importance of things like your personal statement uh, and your extracurriculars and stuff like that. Um, yeah, definitely. And then what, what was your LSAT score? Um, and I imagine that would play a big role, but I think the viewers might also be curious um, if you don't have that top LSAT score. Um, maybe you still have a good shot at these programs based on what you said about like the personal statement and the extracurriculars. Yes. Uh, so my LSAT score was a 165. Uh, I think on the August test, I worked out to have been 91st or 92nd percentile. I'm not 100% sure. Um, um, yeah, 165. And so again, you know, people might think you need the 170 to go to U of T, that's kind of the, um, I guess, sentiment that you might see on these forums. But again, I think, I think 160 is a very good number to aim for. That's kind of like the magic number they tell you when you apply to law school. 
Um, but again, I think that, you know, th there's a range of scores that, that can that can get you into U of T. Uh, I had a 165. Um, and it's, it's interesting because when you apply, they do tell you the admissions committee, there was a presentation I went to, I think in October uh, via Zoom. And, and, and anyone who is applying to U of T, I would 100% recommend that you look into that. Uh, I think they announced it in August or September. Uh, and they tell you, you know, the way we uh, do our admissions is we consider your GPA to be worth one third, your LSAT score to be one third, and your personal statement to be one third. And they, they kind of hold them in equal weight. So, you know, a stronger applicant in some of the other categories uh, might make up for uh, a weaker other category, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's really, really useful. Um, and do you have any any tips maybe for the viewers about how to prep for the LSAT and the process that that you undertook um, in preparation for the LSAT? Yeah, um, I really enjoyed studying for the LSAT. I, I I did it with a friend, and I think that was that was the first kind of key piece of advice that I would give. When you're doing it with someone, and and someone sort of in the in the struggle with you, I guess if you will, it makes it a lot more. Uh, one, it drives you to do it every day. Uh, and there's, I think I sort of had with my friend, we kind of had that sort of very healthy competitive sort of um, relationship where we kind of, whenever we do a practice test, uh, not only was I thinking of improving my own score, but you're always kind of, you know, thinking about, oh, I, I got to keep up with him or I got to, you know, maybe do a little, he did better than me on the last one. So I got to do better than him on this one things like that. And again, it's, it's all very meaningless at the end, but I think that doing it with someone and, you know, having someone to bounce ideas off of, and, you know, if you're struggling with someone, you can, you know, if there's a certain, or if you're, you know, I don't know, there's a certain type of logic game that, you know, you just can't get, you do, you do them over and over again. And then you watch your friend do it and he, he can kind of explain it to you. And then you, you can kind of bounce ideas off each other constantly. I think that that's, really important and if you can find a study buddy um to kind of do the LSAT with I think that that's it's huge and it definitely helped me out uh and then in terms of actual preparation so again I started in May uh but a week after I took a week off uh after exams I started in the second week of May and I started with Mike Kim's LSAT trainer uh it's a book and you can print out a schedule uh and you kind of there's like a lesson week by week uh, and then it's got, and then you got to buy the uh, book from LSAC. I think it's got like 10 prep tests in them. And then there's, you know, so you follow the lessons in the book and then it's got, you know, your drill sets uh, outlined week by week. So it gives you kind of a calendar that you can print, it's very flexible. But I think that was a very good resource to sort of get an idea, a background. Uh, it's very, it starts off very basic. Um, so, you know, you kind of, it and, and, you know, builds over, over, over the weeks. Um, so I finished the LSAT trainer about a month. And then at that point I was, I enrolled in the Princeton review, uh, a Princeton review course. Uh, and I did that for, that was a six week course, uh, online. So it was Monday to Friday from nine in the morning to 12. Uh, you do six prep tests throughout the course and, um, you know, it kind of breaks. It's very, very convenient because it kind of breaks whenever you do do a prep test, it breaks your score down into types of questions, uh, sections, gives you an explanation for every question. Uh, you have a required homework every night. Uh, and so again, the prep courses are a little bit pricey, uh, I guess is the only kind of caveat to that. I found it very beneficial because um, I guess I'm not naturally a very structured, rigid person who can commit to, you know, kind of giving myself uh, X number of hours per day, but this made it, made it very easy to kind of, you know, structure my day. And, you know, every day I would start at nine o'clock, work till 12, I would take a lunch break. And then I would usually study from, or do, you know, practice questions and homework from about one till about six. Uh, so that course ended in July and then uh, mid-July. And then from mid-July to my test at the end of August, uh, I just strictly did prep tests. I would do one prep test a day, sometimes two. And that was what I did until the test in August. That's, that's super helpful. 
yes, overall, a very positive experience. I actually really, again, I really enjoyed the LSAT, even writing the test. I had the benefit of doing the LSAT flex, which they kind of changed. Uh, they changed it into the flex uh, because of COVID. So I was able to write it at home and it was again, the three sections instead of five. I think they've actually made it four now. Um, so I, I did get that benefit, but um, I really enjoyed it. I didn't, I think that if you go into it with a, with a calm mentality and don't overthink it, um, I think that, you know, with hard work, I think anybody, it's a very learnable test and everybody, anybody can do very well. They really try their best. That, that's awesome. Um, cool. And my last question, I think, I think we covered a lot of ground, but my, my last question is just like, based on your experiences, um, what would maybe be your top tips for, for students that are thinking about applying to U of T law and maybe specifically students that are situated in a similar spot as, as you were about a year ago around this, this time? Yeah, um, I guess top tips was if you can find U of T and um, I'd be happy to provide sort of my contact information. I, I don't know anything about, or I know very little, little about what being a law student at U of T is like. I'm sure I will know more uh, in the coming months, but just talking to people who've actually done it before, who are actually there, who have gone through the application process, who are maybe in their first or second year. Um, I think that, you know, reaching out and talking to people, like, I think would be the first kind of key piece of advice that I would give. Um, the second is don't think that you have to do certain extracurriculars or certain things because you think that they will look good to law schools. I think the law schools really just want to know about you. And if you do things that you're passionate in and you do things that interest you and you do things that, you know, that you I guess have a, have a, have a reason to do because, because they mean something for your own personal development and, and, and the way that you understand the world, um, I think that, that has way more value than anything that might have a fancy name to it. Um, and I realized that kind of accidentally, um, I didn't pick any of my extracurriculars or experiences to tailor the loss to, to any of the law schools. I kind of just picked them because, um, they interested me and I thought that I could maybe, you know, develop both as a person and maybe help others, um, by doing those things. And I think that that's something very critical. Um, and, and we'll show to the law schools that, you know, they kind of tells them about you as a person and, and if they're able to see that, then um, I think it puts you in a really good, really good spot. And then other than that, just, um, I think just hard work, you know, uh, keeping up with your, you know, with your, um, with your classes throughout your undergrad to make sure that, you know, you kind of have the, the GPA in the area that they're kind of looking for. And then uh, in terms of the LSAT, just kind of what I mentioned before, I think that, you know, um, I think that applying to law school is, again, a stressful experience, but um, definitely one that's manageable, and there's tons of people who are willing to help out. Thanks so much, Diego. And I will include Diego's contact information in the, the comment section below, so you can get in touch with him if, if you're interested in, in reaching out as you, um, then, as you embark on this new law school um, application adventure. Um, so thank you so much, Diego, for, for taking the time to chat and, and sharing your, your experiences 